Hello and welcome to another episode of Pat Bear's Anime Club, an ongoing video series where every other week I take a look at something from the world of anime that I want to talk about. Sometimes it's a deep dive on a particular show or a subgenre or just like a thought a topic, an idea, the history of certain things, whatever I want to come up to. Um, one of the things I often do is I take a look at the uh, the end of the current anime season and I preview the following season. And I will be doing that on June 29th. You can see here, Pat Bear's Anime Club, episode 74, because the one you're watching right now is 73, so this will be the next episode, is the spring wrap-up summer preview on June 29th at 9 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash patbear. Please, 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 please uh, uh, come watch that live. It's a lot of fun. Um, I mean, it will be the next episode, so you can watch it as it happens. Uh, I keep an eye on chat, so if you have any thoughts on it, shows, because there's sometimes I'll be like, hey, I watched two episodes of Birdie Wing, and it didn't hit me, and then chat will explode with people being like, Birdie Wing is the best show this season. I'll be like, I, I, I hear you. I just don't agree. Uh, it didn't hit me. Sorry. Stuff like that. Uh, also in the comments below, let me know what your favorite show of the season is, because I like seeing that in the comments. Anyway, what's about this episode of Pat Bear's Anime Club? Because it's episode 73, not the one I'm doing in the future. Well, uh, we're talking about the unchosen ones. Um, the chosen one, not just in Shonen, but also in many other uh, 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 of the adventure and action series, even dr drama series are also can feature the chosen one. The main character is has some sort of destiny they can't escape from uh, to save the world or... Uh, save the village or save the people or all humanity or all existence, uh, whatever. We're coming to this because we talked about um, in the last video, Ichigo from Bleach, because the Thousand Year War is coming in October, um, the final arc of Bleach. Um, I will leave a link in the show description below of that episode if you want to check that out. But anyway, Ichigo is the chosen one, and as the story goes, not only has he been talked about constantly throughout the whole thing, later possible retcons, depending on your point of view, but information is presented that lets you know that he has been the chosen one, and everything has been leading to Ichigo. He is the chosen one. He is of all people. He is all things to everyone. He is... He is the end and the be the beginning and the end and the end is the beginning and it's Ichigo and and hey who's that over there it's Ichigo thank God Ichigo showed up with all these powers Ichigo's powers are gone don't worry here's new powers and also here's hidden powers and the thing you thought you understood about uh, Ichigo that made him special that's not actually what made him special it's this other thing that makes him even more special he's the chosen one there you go. Um, it's important that Ichigo is there for the story. It's his destiny. That's not always the case. And sometimes it's subverted. And sometimes it's just flat out like, nah, there's no destiny in this story. This is just our main character. And we'll look at that. And let's talk about like the big one. The big, big, big one. When you're thinking of like, this is not a special care person. It's just the world is better because they're there. Or worse, depending on your point of view, I guess. Uh, let's talk about Goku. Now, I got a Dragon Ball Z photo up here because it's special, especially important to say. We're talking about Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball Super Goku. Um, uh, not Super Goku, Dragon Ball Supers, Goku. Because if you're talking about Dragon Ball, I mean, so it's not explicitly said that, that Goku is the chosen one, but Goku is Song Goku. He is the monkey King because Dragon Ball takes inspiration from uh, journey to the West. Uh, you have uh, Goku as, as the monkey King, as I said, and also uh, who, who is the first enemy turned friend? Well, Puar, uh, you got yourself a pig man going in there and then various other characters kind of fit in, but not really that they're way looser. Uh, Cause it's like, is anybody a monk in any of this? Kind of. Krillin is... I guess Krillin is technically a monk. I guess. Um, so, anyway. Dragon Ball. That's besides the point. I'm talking about Dragon Ball uh, Z. Because Goku is our main character and is the strongest force in the universe. Unless other forces of the universe show up. In which case, Goku beats them and gets stronger while he's trying to defeat them. There are caveats to that, but generally. And if Goku... Because, like, Goku could have beat Cell. 
Goku wanted instead to see his son beat Cell. That's it, really. Um, and any other major villains that get defeated uh, often is just because Goku was was going to do it. Don't worry about it. Um, but Vegeta is the prince of the Saiyans. Vegeta is, has the blood of the Saiyans. He is a, he's the next king of the Saiyans. He is royalty. Goku is a grunt. Goku is just like the son of a nobody. Goku's doing stuff, and we're glad Goku's there doing things, but Goku's not, like, essential. Uh, Goku's not supposed to go Super Saiyan and beyond it. Goku should not be a god, uh, but he is. And that's an excellent example of, like, well, we know that Goku's going to be the main character, but Goku doesn't need to be the chosen one to be special. Goku's special because... Uh, I mean, honestly, Goku's special because of the Sensu Beans, because without the ability to um, come back from the brink of death, that's how Saiyans get stronger, is later explained. Uh, and I guess also the Dragon Balls. It's very important that he constantly uses Dragon Balls, I guess, um, so he can come back to life, because he has certainly died uh, a bunch. Um, too many times, one might think. But anyway, it's Goku. Goku isn't the chosen one, but Goku is goddamn essential. If anything, Oob is the chosen one because it's the reincarnation of Boo. Um, maybe Oob is technically a chosen one. But Vegeta is really the chosen one on the series. And how does that work out for him? Not always great. What else are we going to talk about tonight? Let's talk about one, as I said, that turns it on its head. You've got Flame of Rekka with this okay photo because I can't find a good photo of all of the cast of Flame of Rekka that is not poor quality because it's a series from 1999 that did not get a reboot. Everybody's, hey, late 90s uh, anime adaptations. We're, we've got Bleach going on here. we got uh, we, we, uh, Shaman King came back. Um, uh, Hunter Hunter got a remake in 2011. Uh, where's my Flame of Rekka reboot? Because the anime caught up with the manga and ended bad it's they made some choices uh i would love to see a uh, faithful adaptation uh of of flame of Rekka because i think it's a fun story and i think Rekka is a very 90s protagonist in that he, he he does have a lot of attitude but he's also like a good he's not like he's not like bob psycho uh or or death uh, um demon slayer level of like good boy but he's a good boy you know like i said he's got two but he's still like he's still trying to save the princess you know it, it, it does feel very like 90s um he made the character he's decided is his princess is literally named princess it, okay um whatever you understand what i'm saying here's the deal with Rekka. Uh, got fire powers because of uh, deals with ancient dragons, which are just manifestations of people as dragons. Spoiler. Um, he's the he's the chosen one. So maybe you're like, wait, Pat, what are you talking about? We're talking about the unchosen ones. Well, here's the thing. He's the cursed chosen one. He's the one that will lead to the demise of uh, the ninja clan that he is a part of. His older brother is supposed to be the next leader of the clan. So we're playing with those expectations where our main character is uh, is supposed to be the destructive force, but he's the hero, and his brother, who should, he's the chosen one, is a monster person. He's uh, sick uh, and twisted. And, he, and when they get sent to the future, Rekka is justified because his brother is a piece of shit. They did try to kill him when they were children. Um... Uh, and you could also argue that the way that this plays on it, spoilers for Flame Rekka, is Rekka does destroy the clan because he destroys their enemies, thus giving the clan no reason to exist. So in a way, Rekka does destroy the clan by allowing it to not be needed uh, and let the dragon, you know, spirits that are ancient leaders go and rest um so technically Rekka wins out um in the end and is is the curse or the prophecy is a chosen one and in the end he by going on his own path by not by not looking to cause destruction because he's obsessed with ninjas and he just wants to do right by his people and also stop his brother 
who, uh, uh, you know, and all that. He is fulfilling his own chosen one destiny, but he's like, it's not that he is from the mo from the jump going to be. The he's not Naruto, you know. He's not this kind of chosen one. Uh, he's forging his own path. Uh, and it just so happens that forging his own path does eventually help with some destiny, but that's not the plan. Um, cause I, one would assume they weren't expecting to be the next leader of the clan to be, uh, uh, a murderous, um, uh, uh, mentally ill person. Th they probably weren't expecting Kunai. Anyway, let's talk about, so I want to talk about Gundam, mobile suit Gundam, uh, because Almost every Universal Century has a chosen one. Not every one of them is a chosen one, but a lot of them are chosen ones. Um, uh, you got this thing of like the sixth sense, the new type thing of like they're born in space. These, these guys are going to be great pilots and girls. Um, uh, but like they can get they can pilot a Gundam without even really understanding how to pilot that Gundam. So some things outside of the Universal Century are also in this, but we're talking about that. And so we're gonna look at Amaro, but we're basically I could have just put a photo of like every Gundam pilot, main character Gundam pilot. They're all the chosen one. They're all instinctively great at it. Some of them get better as it goes. Um, you know, like maybe some struggle, but like they're teens they were in school yeah they, they, their circumstances are different but g in general they're just like hey maybe they even lose the war maybe the war doesn't go their way because one person can't actually change the destiny of everyone but like we are looking at the the story through their eyes and their training and their uh innate unbelievable talents that you know it's just like they should not be able to pilot these Gundams without training. They do, and they do it better than a lot of other people. And generally, there's only one other person that might be better than them, and they've trained all their lives, and they would be the main character if they weren't the enemy. Fun. Uh, and then sometimes they have to kill their brothers or best friends, but that's besides the point. Um, Gundam is full of main characters, uh, and this is going to be fun. Uh, Gundam is full of main characters who are the chosen one and instinctively awesome at piloting Gundams. And we're coming up on a new series where we're going to have a female lead and there's going to be a portion of the internet that is going to be like, she shouldn't be so good at this. Or, you know, maybe she's trained her whole life and they'll still say she isn't so good. But definitely, if they follow the same pattern of she stumbles upon a Gundam and is awesome at piling that Gundam, there will be a very vocal uh, group of people who will be like, it doesn't make any sense that she's so good at that Gundam, even though that's the fucking history of Gundam. So get ready to be annoyed. Me. I'm just prepping to be annoyed in October. Fun. Hunter Hunter. So I love, I've already mentioned Hunter Hunter in this video. I like talking about Hunter Hunter because it's a... A fun series. I like both anime adaptations. The manga is coming back, so it's fun to talk about it. I've talked about how each arc in Hunter x Hunter is like a different kind of shonen uh, anime and how weird it is. And I wouldn't say that Gone is the chosen one, per se. But we had to talk about the fact that Gone isn't the main character of Hunter x Hunter anymore. And it's Kropika. It's not even... Kilua, who could be considered the chosen one, because eventually he's going to lead his family, the Zoldix, and it's going to be this whole thing. Like, you could maybe even argue that, but like, you know, you look at his dad leaving this trail, like, his dad leaves this trail for Gone to follow, which in a different series would be the breadcrumbs needed for him to go on this arc to become the greatest hunter of all time and run the Hunters Association and be a legend and unite people or whatever. That's not this series. This series is just like, yeah, this was Gon's story up until it wasn't Gon's story anymore. Gon paid the price. Gon lost all his powers. There's probably a way to give them back. Not interested in doing that. Uh, we're going to focus on this family for a little bit. Okay. Leorio, we haven't talked. Le Leorio comes back and has... Leorio does get a very good moment towards the end of Hunter x Hunter, the, the anime adaptation of 2011. But, like, before that, Le Leorio served his purpose. We're good. We don't need to do that. The mistakes of Yu Yu Hakusho are shown in Hunter x Hunter. Then it's just like, yeah, Krapika, always 
an interesting character, if not the most interesting character. Let's see what happens with him. He's going to do a bunch of other stuff. We're going to introduce dozens of new characters in this, you know, the, the current story that is coming back, the Secession War. Uh, and it's just the world is way bigger than Gone Freaks. And that's incredible for a shonen, a 90s shonen with a fun design for a main character uh that it's like nah nah you know what nah not the main character utterly bizarre again not exactly what i was talking about about the unchosen ones but like this is mostly a meta thing where you're looking at the story you would assume that this is the chosen one um but nope just a guy in the world and then I love talking about Black Clover uh, because Black Clover feels like it, it is another show that is subverting the chosen one, unchosen one uh, thing um, in the fact that the, the, the person who should be the chosen one is in the show the whole time. And he's not a villain uh, because uh, Yuna, like, um, okay, so Yuna... Here's a big spoiler for Black Clover. Uh, it happened in the anime, so this is not a manga spoiler. Yuna is a prince from a country, that, and he uh, you know, went through some dark times. He was separated. He was abandoned um, for his protection. He just so happens to be next to another orphan at the exact same time, another kid abandoned at an orphanage who is Asta, our main character. Um, but Yuna is... Uh, a godly prince. He has uh, a, a connection with an incredibly powerful spirit. He's always been good at magic. He has a incredibly powerful grimoire. Um, he should be the main character of the story. And there isn't conflict about the fact that Asta is the main character. This un, like unbelievably, because there is some destiny, there's some stuff tied to him, but like, He's the unchosen one. He is uh, uh, given these uh, abilities by pure chance. They are. He has anti-magic. This is a world where if you don't have magic, you're nothing. And he has anti-magic. So it's not that he has no magic. He has like, he has this completely bizarre body that is a complete coincidence. It is not fate. And the uh, series of events happen which you could say is some destiny, but doesn't seem to be. It just seems to be that, like, yeah, he had a demon inside of him, inside this grimoire. It w used to hold another demon before. He's tied to this event, but, like, there's no elf hiding in him, like, there, because there couldn't be. Um, but when the elf arc, um, no, you know, like, he, he's str struggling. He's going to become the Wizard King, even though he has no magic. And also, Yuna wants to become the w Wizard King to protect people the common people the commoners um and also to have a rivalry with his best friend um but they there's not a hateful rivalry there there's no teen like angst he's not sasuke uh you know could just be the main character of his own story hell like there there's a dozen characters in black clover that could be the main character it just so happens that asta is um, cause you know, the one that should have this destiny. He should be re he should be uniting these kingdoms and he should be taking, uh, uh revenge for the people that have suffered and, and freeing them as their next rightful King for the country that was usurped. Uh, he's got all this history and destiny, but also what about the guy who can't use magic, but can use cool swords and then gets demon powers, uh, he gets demon's powers by the end of the anime, but also that's a big thing. But yeah, you got to fight a demon with a demon. Now he's got cool demon powers with his uh, demon friend who was also raised by his mother somehow. Um, uh, it's just a wonderfully weird uh, story. And it's about a boy whose magic power is never giving up, which I also love. So I love, I love how it's playing with that. Look, there are other series that do this that we haven't really gotten uh, too far into because they're series I'm not super familiar with. I'm talking about the ones I want to talk about, but like we could talk about like Madoka and how like it goes from being a character who isn't the chosen one, but because of someone trying to save that person's life over and over again, they become 
so powerful that they are a, a, a chosen destiny character. Um, uh, but I'm not super familiar with that series, so I can't really speak on it too much. But let me know in the comments below about Unchosen Ones, your favorite examples of that. Um, uh, it's not about working hard, but it's about those things of just like, yeah, what about the characters that didn't have a grand destiny and their parents weren't famous or well-known? What if they were just like people and they're just the main character doing their goddamn best? Let me know in the comments your favorite ones of those. If you disagree with any of the ones I talked about here, um, and yeah, get ready to start talking about because again, on uh, the 29th, I'll be recording Pat Bear's Anime Club, episode 74, the spring wrap-up and summer preview, 9 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash Pat Bear. Um, it will go live again uh, that Monday. Uh, if you can't watch it uh, streamed and recorded, you can watch it on a normal Monday in two weeks um, from this uh, release. And uh, you, can, you can check that out then. It'll just in time for the uh, summer uh, season to start. There will be a little bit of a gap um, uh, where a lot of series are wrapping up very soon. Um, uh, and then more series will be kind of start a little late or like uh, Shaking Mori's Not a Cutie had like two weeks off. Uh, those will be wrapping up soon as well. And then we will eventually be able to... Um, yeah, put a pin in uh, the spring season and get excited for the summer season. Uh, I hope you uh, will join me for that video. And thank you so much for watching Pat Bear's Anime Club. Again, leave a comment, leave a like, share with a friend. If you uh, if you talk about this kind of stuff in anime and talk, talk about the chosen ones and the unchosen ones, and you think you have a friend that would like this video, please share it with them. It would do me a hell of a lot of good. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.